Welcome back to the channel, YouTube. If you want to know the best leveling spots in Disgaea 1, then you came to the right channel. I got nightmares in my head, I fear that the thoughts build up until I can't hear that my mind fills up into a creature and it haunts me somewhere much deeper. Anxiety filling up every space, no problem. Welcome back to the channel, YouTube. Winks here. If you haven't already, go ahead and click that like, subscribe, and notification bell buttons so you don't miss out on anything that I upload. I do apologize to my returning subscribers. I haven't dropped any content in a while. As I mentioned in my last video upload, I am taking uh, classes now for industrial engineering, trying to finish up my bachelor's. But just so you know, in terms of scheduling and what to look out for, on my end, I am about two semesters away from completing that. So there'll be some time in December to drop some videos too. Uh, if you're new to the channel, just as a note, there are timestamps down below if you want to skip ahead to a specific topic that you're looking for. Uh, but if you do, just know that you might miss out on some content. So moving right along into the video, like I said in the beginning, today we're talking about the best leveling maps for Disgaea 1. For the first part of this video, like I stated, uh, the purpose of the video today is to teach you all the maps that are good for leveling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through briefly uh, a list of those and then I'm going to move on and you know talk about a few key points in each map individually uh, because your time is valuable and so is mine. So so the the two pre-game I guess you would call it or uh, before you beat the main campaign early leveling maps one is Jotunheim and Terrible Cold the next one is going to be Stellar Graveyard 1 and then Val Valgepus 4 those are going to be you know before you beat the main campaign the next two are going to be very post game one of them is going to be found, well, both of them really are found here. Uh, one of them is the Cave of Ordeal 3, and then the second one is going to be Demon Hall Mirror. For the fifth one and the last one, that is going to be really, really, really post-game, is going to be found in Etna Mode, and it is going to simply be the Cave of Ordeal 3 again, but this time, again, it's in the Etna Mode version. Now... If you don't know how to get Etna mode, uh, it's real simple. You just go through a cycle one time, and then at the end, once you beat the main boss or the final boss, you're given two options. Uh, you can start a new cycle, a second cycle with all your same saved progress, or you can start in the Etna mode, which is essentially harder enemies, and you do not have Laharo. So, word of advice if you switch to Etna mode, just make sure if you got any good gear on Laharo, you need to put it on somebody else so they can carry that into the Etna mode. In order to find Etna mode, you have to complete reading a series of her diaries before you, before you make it to a certain point in the campaign or something like that. It's really simple. You just find this little hole in the wall in the back over here. It says something like, there's a breeze or something in Laharl mode, and then you go into the room, and then you just read those diaries, because each chapter you complete, there's a new diary or something along that. You just make sure you're reading those each chapter, and then by the end of the game, when you beat the campaign, you should be able to have the Etna mode unlocked. So now we're like four minutes into the video, and if all you were looking for was the maps to go to and to use, then you could technically just leave the video now, because you would have gotten everything you needed. Those were the maps. But now let's talk about those maps individually and what you need to know and how to use them. So the first one is Jotunheim. Terrible cold. So this one's pretty simple. It's pre-campaign, pre-end you know, boss or whatever. So all you really want to do ideally is have four characters out uh, to combine these enemies because you can throw these enemies into each other. And at the end, once you get them all combined into one enemy, you want to, you know, corral that enemy down here to the end, get them right here on this panel, and everything around that panel is, is invincible, so it doesn't matter how strong they are. 
even if they're level 600 and your character's level, you know, 20 or whatever, they're not going to kill your character. You can just sit here and wear them down until that character is gone. Side note, when you are throwing enemies to combine them, it is always the receiving character that the combination becomes. Observe. I threw the demon or the succubus onto the cat. Now it is a cat. Once you get this character over here on this tile, they're going to be level 112. So if you're starting at level 1 with the character you're leveling, you're going to want somebody strong enough next to them to help execute a team attack to wear them down. But the idea is that these characters in this tile can now take damage and your characters cannot. So just like this, we are going to attack and level this level 1 character up. Now, early on, that is a good technique to help level your characters. As you saw, I went up to level 23 with that one level. Now, keep in mind, as another side note, that this boss at the end of Disgaea 1 is level 80, I believe. So he's not that high of a level. Now, don't get it twisted. You will probably need a character probably in the range of 200 to 300 for their level because he's still pretty strong. But you can do this comfortably, beat the campaign with a single character, like I stated in my last video. This is also going to assume that, like I stated in my last video, that you have already gotten your level 900 statistician to help with your leveling. For the second map, Valjapus, uh, it's even easier. All you have to do is get your character to have a... 3x3 three three attack for mine I had the winged slayer and you just come here and simply attack the 9 the 3x3 three three formation and you just keep doing that over and over to level your character up to a comfortable level for map 3 the cave of ordeal 3 in the normal mode same thing 3x3 three three tile using a character that has a 3x3 three three attack the difference on this one is there is this geo panel here that adds 50% uh, extra experience and the demons here are at default level 150 now keep in mind for any of these maps you can increase the difficulty and the experience given from the enemies in the dark assembly by passing the strongest enemies or stronger enemy bill but like the previous one on map 2 same concept you just simply Execute a 3x3 three three attack and rinse and repeat until you get to the level you want to get to. For map number 4, Demon Hall Mirror, this one's a little bit different. To unlock Demon Hall Mirror, you have to beat Cave of Ordeal 5. So real quick, I'm going to show you how to do that. It's got this circle of enemies here, a dragon here, and then over here you've got this panel way over here that has an enemy on it that you have to beat the first time now in order to reach him all you need is two thieves observe stack your characters up just like this here and then you are going to proceed to pick them up and then you are going to throw them to get your character over there to then move over here and finish off that last zombie character. Once that is done, you will have unlocked the Demon Hall Mirror. Once you have unlocked the Demon Hall Mirror, there is a series of iterations that you gotta do to beat it, to make it repeatable, and, but when you do, it will unlock this 9x9 nine nine square, and you have the 100% uh, EXP here, I'm sorry, 3x3 three three square. Let me correct myself here. And then it's the same as those other maps, like, uh, what was it, Cave of Ordeal 3. You just use the attack, and then rinse and repeat, and you just level your character up. Now the final map, like I stated earlier in the video, this is really, really late game. This is assuming you've gotten your statisticians, you've gotten your arm master leveled, you know, compiled and leveled up, 
and you have also gotten some super robot suits and a, a level 40 sword to accompany that. And once you get all that and you come to the Etna mode and you start leveling up there, the last map you're going to use for leveling, which is phenomenal, by the way, is again in the Cave of Ordeal, Cave of Ordeal 3. Just like some of the other ones, it's a 3x3 three three tile and you got one of these EXP Geo panels over here. You are just going to use whichever character that you are leveling with all that in combination. For example, uh, I got the Yoshisuna sword and the super robot suits and the hyperdrive and those I've already taken to the item world. But as you can see, my divine Majin here is level one. And from and I've also just to speed this up a little bit, I've reassigned my skill order. I moved Wing Slayer to the top, so I didn't have to cycle down through to find it every time. It just makes the overall process a little quicker. But it's just a three by three. You come in here, you wipe them out, and with just one run, let's take a look and see how many levels I got. So I got a thousand levels in one run. Now there is a diminishing return on that. It does start to lose the effect as you're leveling here uh, however I will say that what I typically do and this is perfect this is the map that you want to get your levels for transmigration and I've timed this and I've gotten it down pretty much to a science uh, what you do is you get all that put together you come here and you start doing your leveling I do this in 24 runs and it, you can get about six runs per minute. So that comes out to about four minutes per every 5,000 levels. Now, if you've ever played a Disgaea game, you know you need about 187,000 stored levels for your reincarnation, AKA transmigration here. So if you do it, you know, roughly estimate four minutes per 5,000 levels, when you do the math, it comes out to about two and a half hours. So you can, get all your stored levels in about that time using the Etna mode. But that's it. That This would be the map that you would use that for. Real quick before we wrap this video up, I just want to give you a couple more side notes before we end this today. So uh, one side note that I want to show you is in, when you come to the Dark Assembly, sometimes you're trying to pass bills or something, and this is grayed out. It says mana, and mana may be tied into this, but it's not just the mana. It's also your influence on the right, and as you can see, mine says 2643. Now, this is also probably going to stay grayed out because I've already unlocked this, I believe, or maybe I haven't gotten far enough into the campaign. But something you need to know as a side note, in case you run into this yourself, in terms of that influence on the right, all you gotta do is get that above 5,000 and possibly have the mana for it and it should unlock the bill or the ability to pass some mysterious seal. And how you do that is really simple. It's just like the trick I showed you in my first video with the statisticians and re-rolling. You just back out and go back in. See, you see how I did that and it's 5106 now? So you have to have the influence and the mana to pass this bill, but that's how you get your influence up. One final side note that I'm gonna throw out there, if it is not already 100% obvious to those watching. In terms of the innocence or um, whatever they're called in this game, uh, specialist, when you come into the Etna mode, that is also stronger. Your specialists are also stronger. So when you look, if you're if you're really determined to get, you know, twenty thousand innocent or uh, specialist in your gear to help with that, it's a tedious process. But this would probably be your best bet to do it in Etna mode because those are a lot higher of a level here in Etna mode. So I'm just throwing that out there. So we've come to the end of the video. So in summary, what we talked about and what I showed you was the the best maps for leveling during any point during the game, whether it's pre-post game or post game uh, and then we talked about the maps themselves and I gave you a few side notes along the way to help your gaming experience be a little better I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you learned something I know I got a lot of 
Disgaea fans that play this game, so a lot of you probably already know these things, but hopefully a newer player may have learned something, or maybe I taught you something you didn't already know. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell, and thanks for watching. Winks out.